Hey, it is Tuesday, September 6, 2022. It is 5.05 p.m. This is a regular monthly meeting of the Augensburg Bridge and Port Authority. The meeting is now called to order. Mr. Lawrence, any letters and communications to the board? Uh, no, Mr. Chairman. Approval of board minutes. August 16th, 2022. Has uh, Mr. King had an opportunity to review those? Anne Marie, do you know? They were reviewed, yes. Any changes? No. Okay. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of August 16th, 2022, as submitted? Oh. Motion's been made. There, second? Seconded. And seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Those minutes are approved. Reports, presentations and reports, committee reports, Chris, finance committee. Well, the finance committee met with uh, the chief financial officer and, and with Steve. I, I forget what your title is, Steve. The Steve executive, executive director. Executive director. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> The report seemed really without particular moment or particular uh, uh, news to report. I wonder whether, Patty, whether you would highlight the uh, items that you think are significant as you go over the reports. <laughs> uh, we'll start with the statement of financial position. <clears throat> You will notice under the reserves and other restricted accounts under cash, in that number is included the amount that we are receiving back from the Harbor Deepening Project. That's what's making that number so high at this point. Our accounts receivable regular, which is our day-to-day -day tenants with uh, the Commerce Park, we are at 274. 93.76% of that is either current or one to 30 days. So again, we're, we're still keeping up quite well on our regular. Our accounts receivable for the wind turbine project is currently at 1.7. We received uh, We received 560 this afternoon. So we're going to Put that towards some of the accounts payable that we have specific to the wind turbine project. If we go down to our current liabilities under our payables, our regular payables are 1.4, the retirement is 169, and all our project AP is 97. And of that, we have paid over a hundred thousand in full of the regular. We have another twenty-five thousand that is was just paid today um, to e transit, and of that one point three over nine hundred thousand is wind turbine related. Any questions on the statement of financial position? If we go to the budget to actual reporting, we will notice that the bridge revenue is up by 50,000 over our budgeted figures. Our biggest change was April. We had budgeted approximately 136,000 and we received 101. So that is the majority of that difference. We are steadily bringing it up to uh, May came to 155, June was 172, July was 173. So we are steadily increasing the bridge numbers. Uh, and I was told that we had a marvelous uh, Labor Day. They actually ran it and we gave them extra change and they ran out. So we had to run back in on Monday and get them some more, some more change. So I expect Monday, uh, today will be a good one. Uh, airport revenue, parking income is 
but more than double what we had budgeted. We had budgeted approximately 3,500 to 3,700 per month, and we've been bringing in the lowest has been 5,500, then 80, 8,100, 8,300. It's still below what MAPCO needs to pay all their bills themselves, but it's much more than we had expected. Our airport revenue fuel sales are still strong uh, and much stronger when we just build um, billing our new alternative EAS. They're right now buying fuel at retail. So the invoice that went out to them in August was is going to help bring up that um, that year to date actual so that we're getting closer to even. Um, our industrial park is down. We're losing a couple of tenants, but one of the things I noticed when I went back to the budget is we evenly rebuild for the budget utilities, and they haven't used their utilities until this winter. So the rebuild on utilities is what is the primary reason for us not having the income. And the port revenue, it's just more timing than anything else that we'll be getting in uh, more salt, which is where our storage income comes from. So I, I believe that's more of a timing issue, as is the wind turbine revenue is well over what we had budgeted thus far, but that will even itself out. To note on all of our utility expenses, any that have rebills, the rebilling to tenants was considered when I made the budget this year. So instead of having gross utilities, we have net utilities, which is why our utility expenses will look over budget for the year. Other than that, we're doing quite well, ex except you'll notice the fuel sale expense in the airport is much more than we had anticipated. We purchased more, we paid much more, and we also just paid off the SkyWest bill for the fuel that they left behind when they left, which was only twelve or $15,000, so it was much better than the amount of fuel that Allegiant had left behind. But it's fuel we can use. It's, yes. Yes. <clears throat> Are there any questions? Everything else is pretty much right on target. Our wind turbine is just a, um, a timing issue again. The uh, airport uh, funding that we receive, when does that run out? I'm trying to keep that going. It will be gone by January, possibly December. As the repair and maintenance is not allowed to be recovered, um, there are some there are some things that you just will have to continue to pay for. Okay. Yes. I'm thinking that as we approach the next quarter of the year, there will be a period when the budget's prepared and yes. then we adopt the budget, let's Based say, on. in our December meeting. And I think that uh, a great deal of that preparation is. It, it, it's staff work and, and the budget is very much a document that the staff recommends to the board and the board accepts. Um, with an idea of, with a goal of uh, involving the board as much as it is practical in this process, there, there are a few um, general trends that I wonder whether perhaps you could if you've got a handle on them, talk with us about next month. 
Okay. I'm thinking about any anticipated staff changes during the next, mm -hmm. uh, during the period covered by the calendar. Uh, you could touch on whether or not uh, the inflation that we've seen, whether there are any substantial price changes that uh, are going to impact our expenses, even if we just consume the same amount of fuel or yes. heat or yes. Yeah. And um, what's the, what are the um, union contracts going to call for, uh, let's say, in pay changes? Well, well, We'll, we'll know what the ILA one will be yeah. because it's being negotiated right now. And then by CFCA April of next year. March 31st. Yes. So that's of, not not yet in writing. But no. but for that for that budget, we'll have to anticipate um, in December sure. kind of what. Um, we know what it is now. Yeah. So at worst, we can budget assuming under the old contract. That, that's right. And, and some of those, you know, we have a position to take. Um, we, we, not that, but, you know, we don't want to. You could put a we, contingency plug in, Steve. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but I. I'm giving away the. Right, and it's not in bad faith or anything. It's just that, um, just as they, um, and we could, we, we informally, we will have to um, get together probably before then to just know that maybe they're just substantial, um, um, you know, issues. Um, and Patty and I really want to talk about um, some things that we all agree that might be uh, making the contract a little um, either simplified or clarified that um, things that have happened in the past mm -hmm. that um, kind of we want to, we'll go through and go back and forth on that. And then when it comes to, you know, wages and benefits and things like that, um, maybe we'll get a feel Mm -hmm. of that if if that's possible not to force their hand or anything but that's kind of um, our thinking but we'll we'll know something i think by the time we start doing budget and you you may know any other topics that mm -hmm. are going to affect the budget that you could relate to the board so that we feel informed and, uh, i think we'll try to do kind of what basically patty and i've been doing the budgets based on trends meaning we'll, we'll see what Bridge traffic looks like what the airport sure. and you know if I can say so I think we've gotten pretty good at it but yeah. that doesn't mean we're going to hit it three times in a row but and I and and we've had input yeah. from the board on all of that to kind of bounce that off that um, when we talk numbers and then we kind of come with a consensus of uh, how we see the you know the economic future and and things like that so. Yeah. Um, I think on top of what you've given us, there's a number of things that we dealt with over the last two years that we need to talk. We need to still, we can't ignore them. We have to go forward with uh, sure. with addressing, you know, how we all see that. Yep. But would you, and we do it in the vehicle of uh, uh, a finance committee meeting. Mm -hmm. um, is that kind of you know when we talk budget? Well, I th yeah. I think that that's appropriate, and and perhaps in finance we'll go into to it more deeply than we would in a board meeting. But as a matter of fact, I I think that the more you can tell the board about the issues that mm -hmm. are going to affect the budget when you present the budget, that, that you know it's it's just a good thing to keep them cool. informed. Well, Patty and I could walk through almost like a larger version of what Patty does for the finance committee. Okay. We, we when we all decide this is a draft of the budget yeah. um, before they vote on it, you know. Um, and we will have six month actuals. Yes. At the end of September. Yep. So we'll. So we actually have trending. a half a year. Well, this is this budgeting process. <laughs> for anybody who's not aware of it, the the process is just one of those things. It's a product of bureaucracy where it doesn't really make sense. <laughs> you know, you, I, I think somebody in the state could probably explain why it makes sense because they need to have their data in place before they, the state can do its budget. But our budget year is April through March, but it has to be adopted by before the end of December. Yeah. And so it doesn't have the benefit of no, even the no, latest year's yeah. year in hand. And uh, 
you know, most organizations have most of the last year in mm -hmm. hand before they have to. Yeah, and, and you'll see some of like last year, we put in for a windmill project and it didn't happen. Yeah. Well, part of that, that the timing of when our budget has to come in, you really don't know those answers until end of December through end of February. Yeah. So um, we we go out and we talk and Adam goes to different, um, and, and some of those, in this case, we kind of had an idea right away. I think it was December. We, we kind of knew that at least we'd have one project. So that's kind of why we're more on target this year, even with a project. Yeah. Um, but it's it's timing. It truly is with uh, with that. So there's things that we can make assumptions, and then um, you know, then when it really happens, we wonder why. Well, that's what we thought at the time. You know. Well, I appreciate the report. Thank you. Okay. Are there any other questions? Megan, Nicole, you all set? I'm okay. Thank you very much, guys. <clears throat> um, one thing I should have done at the beginning of the meeting, and I don't know how I lost track of it, maybe because he's so far on my on my left and his back is to <laughs> the camera, is to uh, introduce our new director of operations, um, Jim Chase. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Welcome. Good. <laughs> Never know. Next time it could be. Uh, so Megan and Nicole, I don't know if you've uh, met around, Jim. Turn around and look at the camera. <laughs> we have it, and thank you. That was my next ask. Hi, nice to meet. You. Hi, Jim. Nice to see you. <laughs> I can't see her. Uh, yep. So welcome. Okay, bridge traffic report. Yes, um, for the last what, three months, we percentage-wise, we've been trending in the little bit of improvement, but nothing, it's kind of like we settled in and you see the percentage change. Um, we're still down roughly in the 45, we've been 42, 46 percentage um, in the last three or four months. Um, but then uh, the one thing you do look at, look at revenue, where basically, um, what happens during the summer is that revenue gap is even bigger because summer is when we get most of our traffic, but you can see there, there's a oh, more than $122,000 that, um, you know, that you'll never get back. But, you know, we are, and to Chris's point there, this was something we talked about. We picked a number and we've been, We've been really close, close. And, it, and we picked 60%, so we're at 55 right now. And, and we feel, well, as time goes, if nothing changes with the current economic situation, that that later on it will improve and bring that number up to the 60, because right now, like, we're running about 55, sure. but um, it'll be very close. It's, 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 it's a least a little bit reassuring that we're kind of on the right track and just hope that those numbers continue to, you know, if we could get that to 35, it would be um, better than budget, but 40 is the number we're looking for. So um, anybody have any questions on any of that? We're still down in uh, truck traffic. Um, are you hearing any, any reasons why and, and might that change as we move into the fall? I don't know the the truck traffic, um, was pretty on par and even above before the vaccine mandate of truckers. Mm -hmm. And I think it's settled, it's come back, but it, it hasn't, uh, I, I think there's a percentage of that truck traffic that this is just my opinion that um, and for all of the crossings that are those drivers that either stay in Canada or stay in the U S and um, don't take loads across just whether, you know, however they um, handle vaccinations. And then there is that can app, uh, the, the uh, Arrive Can. What's that? Arrive Can. Arrive Can, excuse me, the Arrive Can app that um, continues over there. And that's just been a drag on uh, cross border travel. <clears throat> you know, there's been others who have expressed uh, the desire to have that uh, removed by uh, the Canadian government. And, uh, you know, maybe getting time where we 
add our name to that list. Uh, so maybe next month we'll need a uh, resolution to that effect saying that, um, at least in my opinion, the arrived can uh, app and, and the re requirement hurts cross-border traffic. Um, <clears throat> I traditionally go to Canada a lot for pleasure mostly, but I haven't been over since uh, they came up with the app. And that's quite unusual for me. And I know there's a lot of others who just don't want to go through that for one reason or another. I know some of our elected representatives have requested the Canadian government remove that. And uh, I think we should add our name to that list come next month. So if staff would, would you like a resolution? A board resolution in Toronto? Yes. Yes. Okay. Please. Megan, the call, what do you think? Agreed. We mentioned this at this month's meeting too. It's definitely a barrier um, for people. Uh, so I, I agree. Yeah, I mean, it, it's due. Absolutely. Good. Good. Tony? Not really sure to be to think about it. Sure, Chris. I'm all for it. I think that uh, I I really would like to eliminate the border. Two <laughs> 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 countries. Go to it. Okay. <laughs> we'll be a leader in that one. <laughs> really fun. Right. Good. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> let's move on to airport activity and occupancy report, Stephanie. Okay, uh, the occupancy report has not changed from last month. We have one tea hanger that is available at this point. Everything else remains the same. Uh, you will see a, um, actually there are two board actions for uh, continuation of hanger leases. Mm -hmm. So the folks that are here are going to be staying. Uh, the, I'm sorry, with the activity report, Unofficial numbers, yes, uh, we're moving up as far as passengers go, but uh, Contour has not yet given me the official in plane to passengers yet. And um, people count passengers in a different way. And the best way is in plane to passengers, that's the actual. And I'd rather have that number than some of the other uh, ways that it's calculated but it appears it is trending upward. Good. I've noticed, um, you know, there's talk on the uh, national level about a lot of um, airlines not being on time and canceling and everything. <clears throat> but I've noticed locally, um, Contour seems to be, they take off 8.05 a.m. or whatever, and, and they're back and, you know, planes are uh, coming and going at the right time. So it seems to be, uh, you know, reliability is pretty high for Contour. So. Yes, it is. And um, we did get notification that there will be a slight change of the schedule. Uh, this is due to the fact that they are adding another route or another city. So uh, instead of flying in at 12, 12.30 p.m. and leaving at 4. Mm -hmm. They will be landing here at noon and leaving at 1, mm. five days a week. Very small change. Uh, that gets them into gets people. Philly earlier, right? It gets them into Philadelphia earlier. That's not bad. Right. Well, the, the 8 a.m. flight remains the same all seven days. So. Uh, That's good. Yes. And contours. Happy with things at the airport? So far, so good. Everything is going well. Good. And they're they're happy with it. And as I said, the, the numbers are trending upward. Excellent. That's good. So Stephanie, just from, um, so they'll come in at, they'll, de they'll depart at one. <clears throat> and then will they, how will they get the? Um, they'll return at the same time, but 8.15. Eight yeah. Oh, okay. That stays the same. That stays the same. Okay. The only difference That's is... Nothing crazy late in the evening or anything no, like that. No, no. Um, the morning and the evening 
flights are going to remain the same. It's just it's a three hour difference. Just the departure time. In departure in the afternoon. Okay. So that works out very well. For okay, thank you. Not everyone. I pick up my granddaughter from the babysitter at Park. Oh, so that'll be all done. And the first thing she says, let's go to the airport. So we go to the airport. She wants, she wants, to, see, says that she wants to see the plane. No, she does. She wants to see the plane take off. So uh -oh. Uh -oh. I won't break it down for a while. <laughs> You'll have to make a phone call. <laughs> no. no, now that just means I got to take her at 8 o'clock at night. So. Oh, well. Anything else? Anyone have any questions for Stephanie? No, Steve, we turn to the port activity report. Um, basically, I report we're winding down with our uh, second bridge pro uh, turbine project. Um, that should be done by middle to the third week of September <laughs> with uh, shipping out of wind turbine blades. And then um, currently, right now, we're prepping everything at the port for um, additional. We've been notified that we will be receiving additional salt shipments. Um, so we're prepping that um, in order to mix star rocks at a later date in the fall and also to uh, get in the right position so that um, there'll be no interruption of uh, or delaying any shipments of vessels there. We've, we've kind of told them um, kind of what we'd like to see, but also we want to be able to say yes at any time. So we're just trying to be in a position where um, that's doable um, there. And if everything works out, it'll be another good year for us um, uh, with that. And then also in October, um, I'm told that uh, American Rock Salt will be shipping in by rail um, uh, salt to us. So we'll be pretty full there by uh, mid-December, I imagine. Okay. Um, so that's good news. Um, we picked up shipments of uh, grain again it was kind of slow this summer i get i i just think um the market's been kind of wonky there but we're starting to fill up again with that and uh we're uh trying to keep uh our storage in in a manageable level in order to keep some free space for some possible projects that um we're just waiting word on um out, they aren't grain storage ones but they're warehouse type of thing so um you know when if, if if that happens good and if it doesn't well we'll adjust but it's um it's it's all looking positive anyway we're we're happy with that um i think that's all i've got right now any questions there was a report and i can't remember where it came from and you saw it on grain uh going through the seaway is way up uh, American farmers out in the Midwest mm. or record crops. Uh, a lot of it had to do, I think, with the situation over in uh, Ukraine. Um, but it's record tonnage um, through the seaway uh, and grain from Canadian and American ports. So um, uh, maybe locally, like we had last year, um, a surplus of grain and corn. Who knows? Yeah, I saw that too. Yeah. yeah. I think you're right on on that one. Yeah, which I think we all anticipated <clears throat> because earlier in the year they talked about the grain issue over over Europe. Mm -hmm. so, and how important Ukraine is to, yes. the, to Europe especially. Yes. So, good. Anything else on port? Any questions for Steve? Okay, Anthony, industrial commercial prospect and occupancy report. Yes, the occupancy report for both the uh, Commerce Park campus and Bridge Administration building is remaining consistent. Uh, special note on building 11, it shows a vacancy of 20,000 square feet, but uh, we do have a fully executed lease for that space, but that doesn't become effective until November. So the report's just uh, a month by month snapshot of the current vacancies. Uh, the remaining available space is all kind of uh, small, unique spaces. So that's going to take a little bit of a unique uh, approach to filling them. Um, we are actively uh, seeking some advertising avenues for those spaces um, to try to get back to 100% capacity across the board. So that's the goal. 
So basically at uh, the end of November, we're out of space. Mm -hmm. you know, we, yeah, the big any major 20, space. Yes. Yeah. Any major space, yes. Right. Right. Then there's just a little bit left. Yeah. Up to yeah. 3,500 square feet yeah, here small, and there. Yeah, small office, uh, clear floor plan space, um, low height warehousing, kind of uh, just a little bit tougher to tougher to get utilized, but right. we're working on it. Okay. Good. <clears throat> Anything else? Uh, not, not at this time. Okay. Yes. It's standard to assume some vacancy. Yeah. You, you know, just in the normal course of business, they're going to be. I don't know what the right number it would be: ten percent or twelve percent or. 7%, but there's going to be some vacancy. Right, right. And uh, it's pretty full. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually it is. Yeah. It is. I just don't like a company coming and asking for 20,000 square feet and we have to turn them away. Exactly. Yeah. That would, so it's a lot of, that uh, would not be good. A lot of showcasing what we have in the future. <laughs> this is what we will. And we're working on that with, yeah. um, kind of having a process mm -hmm. that um, we can put out there the um, what's available and it's a lot of it has to be envisioning what can be put on our different parcels mm -hmm. so we're, we're trying to do that with the idea of um, how they tie into utilities and utility corridors mm -hmm. and also um, kind of know especially with environmental issues what, how much parking you put there how much truck space and logistics space but um, we're getting there slowly. It's not, um, yeah, of course we'd like to see it, but Anthony's aware of kind of our approach to that. So, um, so we have a general idea of what utilities and everything we would need. If somewhere on that map over there, mm -hmm. uh, we were to uh, construct another building. Yeah. Well, I'm mm -hmm. kind of behind, you see where one between mm -hmm. one and the Felsco and three, mm -hmm. there's a utility corridor that runs straight, straight through to Hanson kind of right follows that back parking lot right next to the green where we've already um assumed we're going to have the uh child care yes. facility so that was the one of the benefits just locating that there we're practically on top of all underground electrical water and sewer right there and then if you go beyond 14 there see where that green space is where we don't own that so that's split in half mm -hmm. between the one and the four if you took a line back there that's all OMH or well, the corrections are OMH. No, I think it's OMH. It's OMH. And then to the uh, kind of the west or the mm -hmm. left side, um, we've, we've, we, right. we believe there's two spots right in there along the uh, roadway okay. that um, we could fit the right size building in there. We also, with more of a, you know, a look across from the bank, we've also talked about the green space there, but it would have to be the certain type of customer that wants kind of uh, uh, a presence and uh, we, we kind of um, kind of match what the Pelsco's done in the bank and, and some of those, but not so much warehouse. Um, but it depends on what the client wants. If they wanted, you know, a presence where, you know, when you're coming off the bridge, you go, oh, right, right. Um, they, they stake their uh, business here in Augensburg. Um, and then also with what we've talked about um, going eastward, you know, yeah. if we could yeah. um, somehow get a hold of some uh, surplus of properties from all nature corrections or whatever, that's, um, and just beyond 11, there's one right there. Um, that would require a little bit more uh, site work. It's, you can see next to the water tower. Mm -hmm. Apologies to the people online that <laughs> they can't see everything there, but um, that that's another possibility too. But it is farther away from the utility yeah. corridor. So, what do we have right here by us? If if we had someone interested in building right over here, overlooking the river, do we have the utilities that we do? Yep. Water and sewer um, sewer goes this way, and gas goes this way. Water is right here, so I mean, and also our building, but also you know over the the beach area that mm -hmm. way, there is um, 
I'm not sure if gas goes over there, but, um, and then electric, um, just come right off the roadway one way or the other, either maybe back that way, but, um, that isn't, it's not remote or anything there, but uh, yeah, that would be something where, um, you really, that would really be a selling point if you could put a, uh, nice, um, corporate office yes. overlooking the river overlooking there. The river. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anything else for Steve? No, any unfinished business, Steve? Um, no, we, no. Okay, business items, uh, A1. Okay, so this is a approval of billboard land lease with Ken and Caitlin Culp. Uh, so staff has negotiated a billboard land lease with Ken and Caitlin Culp for property owned by the Culps located in the town of town of DeKalb Junction, New York for a period of two years at a rate of $425 per year. And this is on Route 11, and it shows the direction on which the Ogdensburg Prescott International Bridge is located. So it's drawing traffic from Route 11, 11 onto 812. Yep. Yep. I've seen it. Of course, I don't think it's that there's not a town of the Cal Junction. There's a town of the Cal. Oh, okay. Yes. No junction. So we need to correct that. Okay. Yeah, I've seen, seen that sign many times, and I'm sure Megan has too. Almost daily. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the resolution is before you. Is there a motion? The maid? Second. You seconded? Any discussion? Anne Marie, call the roll, please. Mr. Coffin? Yes. Mr. Burns? Yes. Ms. Whitney? Yes. Yes. Mr. Manelli? Yes. Motion carried. Okay. <clears throat> I think I have the right thing. Am I going to agenda D1? Right. Okay, whoever that is. What's that? Do, who's do you read, who's yeah. reading oh, that? Sorry, that's me. Um, <laughs> approval of the FAA grant agreement to construct the airport drainage improvements. Um, just for some background, the uh, airport drainage improvement project um, was bid, I believe, in late March. And we what happens is you get a price, a bid price, and then um, you award it, or you don't award it, but you take that number and you, we take it to the FAA. And then based on that number, we await their approval and then they'll give you a grant for that. So it, it's not like we have the money, then we bid it, and then we award it, and then we go forward. So um, with the way the economic conditions and all of that, um, there was a little bit of hesitation, or there might be hesitation on the contractor's point of view, saying, you know, inflation and things go up, that they may not be able to honor that. But they, um, it was awarded to Barrett Paving, and they, they agreed um, with that. Um, in such a delay, they'll probably won't do this project until um, I probably they would start late April of next year or late spring. Mm -hmm. And uh, this would involve uh, taking care of uh, airport drainage and also doing a road cut across uh, 812, taking um, a, a um, outflow pipe right out to the river, and it would it would uh, consolidate. We I believe we have two two or three um, different parts of the uh, port but this would put it all into one spot. And then also would eliminate a couple holding ponds that um, currently can become a wildlife attractant. So the idea would be you fill them in and then, you know, they go away and then you've got a, uh, a better, uh, uh, also a better drainage around the uh, terminal, especially, which is, we've had always had issues with that. So for future uh, work, this would all be done and it would help uh, help improve that area for future use. So anyway, we did receive an, a grant from the FAA for construction of airport drainage improvements. Phase four, dash four, or slash four at the Augsburg International Airport is identified as um, AIP number three, dash three, six, dash 089, dash 064, dash 2022, in the amount of 2,380,655. Financial particip participation is as follows. The FAA 
um, would um, be two million three eighty um, slash or six hundred fifty-five dollars. That would be ninety-five percent. Um, the New York State Department of Transportation and the OBPA would um, pay 2.5%, which would be 62,649 for a total of 2,505,953 dollars. And that would be the 100% um, of the grant. That's the, the number, but um, the amount that we would receive would be the 2.380 number. Yeah, the numbers. Yeah, I was going to ask where they different. I, I don't know. Michael. Yeah. So the top one is correct. correct. Yes. Okay. Yeah. You can see the all of the uh, all of the. Um, the percentage of everything is the top numbers that are correct. Top numbers, so it should equal the two point five. Yes. So the resolution itself should read: Federal Aviation Administration, their uh, um, financial participation is two million three hundred eighty thousand six hundred fifty-five. New York State DOT, 62,649. OBPA, 62,649 for a total of 2,505,953. Is that correct? Yes. That's how the resolution should read. It's been moved. Second? Second, by. Second in. Okay. Any discussion? Any discussion, Amory, call the roll, please. Mr. Coffey? Yes. Mr. Burns? Yes. Ms. Yes. Mr. Manali? Yes. Ms. Kennedy? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Agenda item D2. Okay, this is for a transfer and storage agreement for the Hangar Space Dalkinsburg International Airport with Mr. Pete Good Bogardis. Uh, monthly hangar rent is $215 a month for the following term, September 1, 2022 through August 31st, 2023. Uh, it's resolved that the executive director is hereby authorized and directed to execute a transfer Keep going. and storage agreement with Pete Bogardis for hangar space at the Ogdensburg International Airport at the rate of $215 per month for the period September 1, 2022 through August 31st, 2023. And be it further resolved that people guardists shall provide proof of the appropriate insurance coverage naming Ogdensburg Bridge Port Authority as additional insured. Okay, this was removed from a previous meeting because we lacked a quorum for this particular resolution. So. Tonight we have the uh, required number. So, is there a motion to approve this resolution? Make the motion. It's been made. Is there a second? And seconded. Is there any discussion? Anne Marie, call the roll, please. Mr. Burns. Yes. I have to abstain from voting on this due to a personal relationship with the tenant. Yes. Ms. Kennedy? Yes. Mr. Coffin? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Agenda item D3. Okay. Approval of lease with Leslie Parish. Staff has negotiated a lease with Leslie Parish for property owned by Mr. Parish, located in the town of Lisbon, New York, for the use and maintenance of a right of way for an outer marker system utilized by the Ogdensburg International Airport for a period of five years at a rate of $325 per year. And this is for that marker system that's located on the McFadden Road in the town of Lisbon. It's east of the airport. East of the airport, yeah. Right. It's that far out? Yeah. Hmm? <clears throat> Their motion? 
So okay, moved. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Anne Marie, call the roll, please. Ms. Whitney. Yes. Mr. Yes. Kennedy. Yes. Mr. Coffin. Yes. Mr. Burns. Yes. Agenda item F one. F one. Yep. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is also a transfer and storage agreement for Henry Space at the Altonsburg International Airport with Mr. Keith Weston. He previously co-owned an aircraft at Hangar 4, registered under Soaring Eagle LLC. He's now taking full ownership of the aircraft and the hangar lease. Uh, this transfers the lease into his name. Uh, he's been at the airport for, for years and is in good standing. Um, the lease renewal at the approved rate, security deposit and required proof of insurance. The monthly runaway is $215. Terms of agreement are as follows, hangar number four, October 1, 2022, until September 30th, 2023, and resolve that the executive director is hereby authorized and directed to execute a transfer and storage agreement with Mr. Keith Weston for hangar four at the Ogdensburg International Airport from October 1, 2022, until September 30th, 2023, at the current rate of $215 per month with a $215 security deposit. Uh, we did approve this last month with Soaring Eagle, and once it was approved, uh, they notified us of the transfer of the aircraft and uh, requested the transfer of the lease. Yeah, I thought we had. Okay, so moved. moved. Second? Second. And seconded. Any discussion? <clears throat> Not here, read on the roll, please. Yes. Yes. Motion carried. I don't know where she lives. That's what it's done like. Huh? Agenda item F2. Agenda item F2 is the approval of the task order number 11 with McFarland Johnson. McFarland Johnson has provided the authority with a lump sum consultant agreement for task order number 11 to provide professional engineering services associated with the construction of a snow removal equipment building at the Augsburg International Airport. The project consists of a design of a 17,000 square foot snow equipment building and a 100,000 square feet of asphalt pavement. The task order number 11 costs associated with providing these services are $441,000. Financial precipitation, geez, as follows. Construction design, um, snow removal building, AIP number 3-36-0089-063-2022. Federal aviation, 423,700, which is 95%. New York State and OBPA, $11,150 at 2.5% for a total of $446,000. That is the 100%. The FAA funding is provided through the FAA Airport Improvement Program. The FAA grant award was approved in July 2022. Um, the agreement for professional engineering services between the Augsburg Bridge and Port Authority and McFarland Johnson for professional services at the Augsburg International Airport five-year period dated April 30th, 2018, and shall govern all task order. Stack recommends approval of this agreement. Is it 441,000 or 446,000? What did I say? Well, one, uh, the, the up above the um, financial participation, it says the total is 441 but the participation it adds up um, it's itemized out to 446. the 446 is the total grant and so that's just a summary down below of what we would get but their services are 441 so that it's all covered in there but i had to put down what the grant 
we we are granted 446,000, but out of that, um, uh, the 441,000 would come out of that. It um, the grant isn't for 441,000, so um, actually there's a there's a buffer in there for an for an extra five thousand dollars. But I had to put in uh, what the AIP um, amount was versus their task order. Does that make sense to you, Nicole? It does. Then how do we account for the five thousand? Is that in case costs um, go up I, during the project? It's it's possible, but um, I had to keep the numbers the way they're written. I couldn't change that. Um, I'll have to when I change that. I'm just going to sign for the four forty one. But I had to tell you where that funding came from. So I, that is the way that's written. So um, and I don't remember anything uh, as far as how that extra 5,000 was in there. That's usually not the case. As you know, most of those, everything matches right up, but I did notice that, but I didn't dare, uh, you know, try to change the uh, grant amounts the way they're written there um, to match up with uh, with what McFarland gave for an engineering uh, cost. We have some questions. Yes, me too. I'm, I'm probably just unreasonably ignorant of what's going on here. Um, how will the building be financed and what are we, are, are we uh, anticipating being able to put this building up once the engineering work is done? Yeah, uh, yes, probably um, there's a rough estimate that the building will cost 4.4 .4 million. Um, and uh, how that'll be financed will be, um, it'll be at the 95, the same participation numbers, but there'll be a significant 2.5% of that sure. would be quickly. That, no, it, it, it'll be a chunk of money, $80,000 of, of that. But, but you would anticipate that the FAA be in for 95 percent of that yes. yes and then um with this building there's parts of that that the faa will not fund so when we start looking at the design of the building we're trying to make it um uh, uh acceptable to, to to changes or things that we want to add but um we may just get a bare bones uh snow removable building just because of cost and what we can afford mm -hmm. there may be things that we want in there but that would be all on us and that would be us, the staff, and the board deciding we're going to put in more money uh, for that. But um, there's a, there's a certain amount when they look at our design. Um, we we already know ahead of time, of, you know, what they will fund and what they won't. And so there's some gray area there, and there may be some parts of that gray area where they say absolutely not. Mm -hmm. And we may feel, you know, if we're in a good financial situation, it's worth doing it now. It always is cheaper to do it now. But sometimes, given um, what's going on at the airport and, and our uh, our uh, you know financial situation out there, that um, we just have to you know we'll put that off. But we're trying to design the building with to be expandable yep. and to be uh, um, kind of uh, we can add different things to that. Now this will be on the GA side. Yes, right? it'll be right behind the uh, transient hangar, the large transient hangar. Which is why we need a hundred thousand square feet of uh, pavement. Yes. Is that one of the major reasons for doing this project? I mean, like, why are we putting up a new snow? Because we don't we, have one. <laughs> no, um, we need to protect our equipment. Currently, we've taken the transient hangar and taken that over and stored our equipment. And and when the FAA gives you money to get equipment, which we dire, we need, they also recognize that you need a place to put it to sure. protect it long term so they they do fund these things. same with the you know the firefighting you know um we're in a unique city not unique but um we're in the northern part of the country and um it's really to to function and operate in that you need to be able to um, put them in you know a heated garage be able to wash them down Yep. And, and to keep functioning yep. whereas 
Um, and then that's kind of what the transient hanger has helped, but it, it doesn't do all the things with heating and water and things like that that you need to uh, wash down your equipment. Yeah. This, is where that eight, it. No, no. this is where the $800,000 piece of equipment would go. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, it, and it makes that other space where it is now more available to it's do anything. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we do, and we have a what we paid for if they did, but it was four hundred fifty thousand for the uh, snowblower. Mm, We've had that right. seven or eight years. Um, we've been lucky to be able to put that in there, but also it takes the utility away from that transient hanger. Sure. Yeah. So, um, and they recognize that. So, going forward, um, you know, you put that on your capital improvement plan, your CIP that um i mean they want to see that that you know if if you're getting snow removal equipment and then three or four or five years ahead there's nothing in there for snow removal it doesn't um impress them about your planning they'll they'll ask a question about that i think that it all makes sense yeah, yeah. Well, just an awful price tag <laughs> <laughs> well everything is pretty dear these days isn't it <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Yeah. Doesn't mean we have to like it. That's right. Um, so, um, part of this uh, in the report section where it talks about the agreement between um, us and McFarland Johnson, five year period dated April 30 of 2018. So, that five year period is up in April of 2023. Is that correct? correct? Yes, we'll have to go out again. So, we have to go out for. Uh, engineering services. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what does that mean in there where it says this should govern all task orders? I don't, what does that mean? Task order is, um, this is number 11 and the next one you'll see is number 12. So out of the whole contract, um, we, we have to have a vehicle there that we can say to them, um, we want to go to the FAA. We would like you to design this building. The FAA won't come back or whatever, but um, we have a vehicle that governs how that's designed with, um, we've got what what we've agreed to pay. So basically the contract's already in place so that we can say, go forth and do this work. And under these unit prices and what they pay for mileage, travel, office expenses. So the idea with a task order is um, we don't have to negotiate every time we ask them to do we've all agreed and up front there so um that's what I, I needed to put that in there just so that you knew that um that this task order will be there you know it's not we're going to go back now and right. um uh, it's like under the existing contract right. with yes. mcfarland johnson yes you good with that you understand what it's all gonna fall on you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Next month I'll be asking you the question. It's been a pretty rough first day. <laughs> it's not over yet. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, resolution is before the board. Is there a motion? I'll make the motion. Motion has been made. Is there a second? Just second it. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Nani and Marie, call the roll, please. Yes. Mr. Coughlin? Yes. Mr. Burns? Yes. Ms. Whitten? Yes. Ms. Terminelli? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Agenda item F3. Agenda item F3 is approval of task order number 12 with McFarland Johnson. And um, basically what this is, I'll, I will read the report, but basically this is for construction inspection of the earlier um, grant agreement when, when, the, when that project goes that we just approved. Um, they will do the construction inspection and administration of the project. Um, things have gotten so big out here. At one time when we first started, that was one of the reasons I got hired here. I, I actually, I could do this work. Um, but it, over the years, it's just gotten so uh, um, uh, the forms and things that you've got to fill out. Um, it's a full-time job. 
and um, they've got people that have handled all of our jobs before, but um, basically they're part of our staff to do this. Um, but we just don't have the people or the manpower uh, to do those things. And if we did, um, and earlier when I did smaller jobs, like fence jobs and everything, I kept a track of my time and we were reimbursed for that. But um, those kind of projects when we were smaller, I could work in and, um, you know, kind of ease the, those costs. But it's just gotten so that, um, and so in this case, when we have a larger, the larger projects, it's just a given that we have to go to McFarland on this. And they've got every staff in place and they're able to um, help us administratively with a lot of finances. And you know, I've come to you on some things that just get really uh, wonky um, and with their experience, it's helped. So that, that what this is, is really providing the construction inspection for the uh, airport drainage project. So McFarland Johnson has provided the authority with a lump sum consultant agreement for task order number 12 to provide construction observation and administration services for the airport drainage improvements at the Augensburg International Airport. The task order number 12 costs associated with providing these service are 254,200. Financial participation is as follows. I'm having trouble with that one. Construction uh, is through the AIP number 3-36-0089 dash 064 dash 2022. The Federal Administ Aviation Administration is 241,490 for 95%. New York State Department of Transportation is 6,355 at 2.5% and the same amount is for 2.5% participation by the OBPA. The FA funding is provided through the Airport Improvement Program. The FAA grant award was approved in August of 2022. The agreement for professional engineering services between the Augsburg Bridge and Port Authority and McFarland Johnson for, for professional services at the Augsburg International Airport, five year period dated April 30th, 2018, shall govern all task orders. Staff recommends approval of this agreement with McFarland Johnson. So, if we add these two up, it's uh, roughly 700,000. Well, six, yeah, almost, almost exactly. And this AIP is part of the uh, yearly 1 million. But also there's, there's more uh, that the FAA puts in on this than just our $1 million, right? Correct. Yeah. So um, that's all, and it's, I don't have it in front of me, but the CIP spells it out of what we're using for discretionary funding and what we use um, in AIP funding and what the FAA funds. Okay. So there may be additional money from that pot that we could use for something else. Yes. Um, and some of- Because that, our percentage and the state's percentage isn't part of that, is it? No. That's over and above. We have to come up with that, and the state does. Well, when it's strictly our money, like it was with the SRE equipment, the snow removal equipment, there was a portion that, um, it, because it went over, we had to, we had to pay for overages on equipment, but there was no participation of the state or the other than the FAA giving us our $1 million toward that. That's correct. Yeah. But if, if you look at these projects, they're over multiple years. Uh -huh. So the 1 million that we talk about, this is spread out over multiple years. So you're not using it all at the same time. Right. Uh, what are we spending our 1 million that we are allocating? I'd oh. have to look at the CIP in front of us to see what this year we're spending that one million on that was awarded. Well, not this year, so probably what we're spending this year came from last year, either the year before or last year. Okay. So you you'd sometimes you parlay that right. toward a project. All right. So I keep thinking about things we need out there in the GA side. Mm -hmm. You know, we've talked about you know 
if someone's paying the night and everything, hooking up to some equipment we don't have, mm -hmm. getting that equipment if we have funds available. I think some, there's some on the CIP of that equipment. Some of that equipment is on the CIP. Okay. Some of that equipment that you're talking about in particular would not be a federal grant. It would be the state would be the state grants would be more in line with that that type of equipment. Okay. But if, for example, our entitlement grant is a million dollars, if this year we spend four hundred thousand of it, then the other 600,000 would carry over to the next right. year's project. So we're not, it's not use it or lose it. It gets carried over in the entitlement grants. Right, so I'm wondering how much of a carry over do we have left? I'd have to look at it, see where we are. Well, not for yeah. today. Yeah, I don't know if we have to come up with that number. Yeah, and then, oh, um, because I know we have that five year plan that we can modify mm -hmm. at any time basically maybe once a year we may need to look at that again yeah and you may at, want you want, budget time you may want to bring some of that forward or push it back yes um because needs change and all of that exactly um, but there is if you um and i can talk about that at another time about sure. some of my opinions on how that CIP work. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Resolution is before us. Is there a motion to accept? I'll make the motion. Thank you. Second? Yes. Been made and seconded. Any further discussion? Not Anne Marie, call the roll, please. Mr. Coffey. Yes. Mr. Burns. Yes. Ms. Whitten. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Is there anything I've missed? No? I don't believe so. Any concluding comments from anyone? Is there anyone online, Anne Marie? No press online? Um, the uh, bridge inspection, how'd that go? Very good. It went well and finished on Thursday of last week. Um, we were able to keep the uh, snooper truck, which is the underbridge inspection truck for one day. And um, we were allowed to use it. And we're trying to troubleshoot an electrical problem that's been haunting us on the bridge where only a certain portion of the Canadian bridge lights were lit. So. Mm -hmm. Um, we don't definitively have that, but that was probably the uh, only uh, thing that came out. Um, as far as the U.S. Um, approach and the suspension span, everything's in um, very good shape. Um, there were um, some flags on the Canadian side that um, we're prioritizing for work this fall and then next year. But um, overall, I was pleased with that. They will, when they do their executive summary for the uh, the bridge inspection, um, their lead engineer will um, probably join us remotely and, and go over that and um, give you um, their view on everything. And then you'll have some, you'll be able to ask some questions of them of, um, of what is going on there. But um, overall, I was pleased, but you, you know, with COVID and not having a full crew out there every day, um, we were just concerned that um, you know, there could be something that we're, uh, we overlooked or anything like that, but it doesn't appear to be so. And some things um, are, are still as in good shape as ever. So um, to answer your question, yeah, it went really well. The uh, September Facilities Committee meeting, has that been scheduled for the uh, pavement evaluation? And uh, who, who's on that, uh, Jennifer and Dave? Yes. Okay, we should get that done. So there's no delay in that. So I know GSA would like that taken care of, even though it probably won't be done this year. No, probably too late in the season, but we may have to, given the costs involved, we, 
we'll have to phase that when we we'll need your advice on that. Okay. Railroad projects, we're moving ahead on that. Yes. Was that a question? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Then you head on to the next 30 and 60 days, move forward with a port dock expansion project bid documents. Yes. Um, we're, we're, we're along on design with the port expansion project. A lot of, just remember, they're two they're separate things. Yep. I'm yep. not trying to, but um, we were, we're pretty well along with that. And so we want to finalize that. But part of that is we've got to revisit permitting and things like that. And the idea would be to get that in a position to bid it over the winter and uh, to go forward with that. But um, we kind of late wet, waited till the dust settled and uh, we'll move forward with that. But the, um, I haven't given them the go ahead uh, on that just yet, but I, I will be, we will be meeting again. And um, it's not a big ask because they were, they were, they were teed up for that. So in the bid documents, do you have to explain is PLA attached to that? Yes, they all, that's, that was a given. We're, we're aware of that. Do you, are you aware of PLAs? Project labor agreements? Not no, Steve will explain it to yeah. you. Yeah. Okay. Who is this? Oh, Stephanie. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> I don't know too much about this, but it could be an issue. Lactation stations? Yes. Um, is that going to be a requirement? Yes. Do we have any space out there? Not right now. It will be a requirement when the, the um, legislation reads when uh, improvements are made to the facility. So unless we do any construction to the facility, we're fine. But when we do anything, that must be addressed. That falls under um, some of it. I, I don't know if that's an FAA thing, but a lot of times the New York State Code um, mm -hmm. You're this good with state. the code you were built under, but the instant you do major renovations, those renovations plus other things start falling under the new code. So, for example, um, if you have smoke de smoke detectors in your new addition, well, you can't just say, well, we didn't have any in the old one. You've got to wire them completely and bring that up to code um, with that. So. If it's mandated in the code that, like Stephanie said, when you go to upgrade, that's a requirement probably for other things, not just airports. Um, there might be other bus data or terminals and things mm -hmm. like that. So the charging stations at public parking lots, and that would include the airport, right? Yes. Who's paying for that? Is the state going to do that? Is there any discussion on that? Or That's the problem. No. They're, they're trying to make it a requirement that 10% of your parking spaces must have the power, or 10% of your parking must have uh, be these charges. So is that we'd need four stations? 10% of 500? Oh, I thought it was 400. Yeah. So we need four or five, depending. 40. 40. 40. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> the, the, wistful thinking. The, the, problem, the problem overall, not just with us or an airport, it's all public use parking. So it's not just airports, it's any public use parking. The, Does that include this? Well, we have ours out there. Yeah. One. Or just a two. Two. But the, the bigger issue is, can the power grid support it? It'd be one thing to install the equipment. That's, that's an expense enough. But when you think overall across the state. If, they, can do it. they do it in Europe. You know what they did in Europe? They tapped into the street lights on uh, almost every block in a lot of the communities right. in Europe. If they can do it in Europe, we can do it here. We can do it. It, I'm not, what it's, we just, have, it's just who's going to pay for it as well. It, it, yeah. What we have That's, in the parking lot out there in 10 years is going to look, look clunky and old right, or whatever. And right. even though when it was put in, we all went, it's been in there, I don't know, eight or 10 years. But what, just to your point, 
well, you know, you'll look at some and go, oh, I didn't think of that. And they'll, they'll resolve that issue. Right now, that's the only one in town, isn't it? No, there's one everywhere. Where? I don't know, but I've still only two. They like to, yeah. I think that's the only one. <laughs> I don't know. Might be the only I don't either. I don't know. I don't even know the DOT has one. I don't think so. I think we're it. We want to advertise that. Clarkson, yeah. Clarkson has a bunch, right? Do they have uh, yeah, do they? identical? Potsdam has some in the village? Yeah, okay. it's yeah. charged yeah. grid, national grid. I don't yep. know if they're like village property or if it's like private business. Oh. Um, okay. Last thing on this. I'm not going to say too much right now because if I do, it would get me in trouble. <laughs> About the legislation permitting Syracuse to form their own police department. Airport. Yes, that was signed. We'll let like that one go for now. Last week. I ain't very happy with that one. You made it, Anthony. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> one more thing on the uh, uh, our agenda, the packet that goes out uh, under uh, press. Mm -hmm. Remove Keith Benman. He's no longer there with uh, Channel 7. I don't know who it is, but. Um, he interviewed me too. I, I have his card. I'll, I'll okay. Get it. Yeah. Correct that. Anything else from anybody? No. Next meeting date, October 6th, Thursday at 4. Is 5 o'clock actually better? Nicole, is 5 o'clock, would it be better for you? Yeah. I mean, it's for not sure. Not your first day in October, but you know, I know you're a newbie, yeah. so I, I hope I hope by then all the kinks are worked out and I could make it. But I definitely won't make a four o'clock meeting ever. <laughs> all right. Five o'clock is better for you, Tony? Yes. Chris, is that I can do it. All right. Uh Megan? Yes, it works better for me. Definitely. There you go. See? Five o'clock. All right, let's change that to uh, 5 p.m. on Thursday, October 6th. Okay, Emory? All right, anything else? Anybody? No press on the line? Is there a motion to adjourn? Mr. Chairman, there is a need oh, to go. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Mr. Chairman, there is a need to go into executive session <laughs> for matters relating to Section 105F of the Open Meeting Laws. That is the medical, financial, credit, or employment history of a particular person or corporation for matters leading to the appointment, employment, promotion, demotion, discipline, suspension, dismissal, or removal of a particular person or corporation. Okay. Do you expect any business to be transacted afterwards? Um, no. no. Okay. There a motion to go in executive session. It's been made. Is there a second? Second. Seconded, and this shouldn't be too long. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? No. Uh, we're going to executive session at, uh, what is that, 625. Going back into public session. I got to look at the computer screen sometime. Sorry, I can't see it. We back? Okay, it is 6.47 p.m. Uh, Mr. Lawrence, any business to be conducted at this time? No, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you. Is there a motion to adjourn? It's been made. Second. And seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We stand adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Good night.